Here we go. Here's a subject that's interesting. I know there's all kinds of hashtags, dads of TikTok, dads of YouTube. What about prophetic dads? And when I say that, it's not about people who are prophets, who are, you know, spiritual fathers to everybody, but what is it like being a dad who's hearing from God in your family when you have children or with their friends and with other kids that are around? What is that like and what should that be like? And when you're going after the prophetic, it should affect your, your role as a father. Again, it could be mother if you're a woman. And with your children, if you have children, it's such a powerful tool to build family. And I think of my daughters and the phases that I've had them. I also think of foster care kids that I had for many years back in that, you know, when I was in my late 20s, early 30s, I was a single guy, but they allowed me in Kansas City, Missouri to be a foster care dad too. So I had these young teenage boys between like 14 and 20 and uh, or 19, I guess it would be, uh, who were still in the system. And it was really wild to hear God for them and just really get a perspective for them. And it wasn't always about giving them words or about telling them what they need to hear. It was about even navigating in my relationship with God, how to be a father, how to be, and for those guys, it was surrogate. For my daughters, how to be a father like the father in heaven. And man, I'm so glad I have that because when you have Holy Spirit, one of the things that he does, he's really good at is he's good at convicting you to stay in the lane of love. And you could feel it when you're, maybe it's a discipline moment or maybe it's a, you don't feel like talking anymore moment. I know there's many times I'm like, all my words are used for the day. And I have a seven year old girl right now who literally will talk from the time she gets up and ask me questions and want detailed answers until she goes to sleep. And even as she's going to sleep, the last 15 minutes of her life that she's awake every night, she wants to use to ask the universal questions of why is God this? Or why is this that? Or why, you know, the, the last couple of weeks it's been uh, in the lake of fire. Does God uncreate people? Does that what happens and uncreate the devil? Or like he never created anything to be destroyed. You've said that. So does that mean it's all going to go away at the end of the age? And I'm like, oh my Lord, I don't know. I'm not a theologian on that level. I don't know. I've thought about that. There is a theology for that. I don't know. And it's just, you know, as a dad, even having a conviction of the Holy Spirit to go, wait, this is a moment I need to actually spend and invest versus I'm tired. I poured out all my energy in work and in ministry and in even parenting already and she wants more. It's like pushing me into overdrive and having the right boundaries at times to say, well, this one, she just needs to go to sleep. She's asking questions or this one is actually really important. This is actually a moment in time that I want to really respect. So parenting and the prophetic is beautiful because you're not just trying to see things for your children. You're not just trying to get words for them or, you know, help them to get words or it's not about evangelism. It's about really knowing this child that got intricately formed in your wife's womb or if you're the wife in your womb and asking God all about them and getting to know their frame after the spirit. And therefore, like Harper, we call her the lion in the lamb because, man, that girl is so powerful, but she's so tender, too, at the same time. But she's, I mean, if you start to argue with her, she tries to one-up you every time. She wants to win every battle. She's intense as you can get. And so Harper specifically, it's like I had to ask God, like, you put this inside of her, this intensity. I don't want to squash it because in the old generation of parenting, you, you know, you just discipline it out of your kids. Like anything that feels like rebellion or anything that feels like strength, even if it's, it doesn't have character around it, instead of building that character, they would just squash it. Like children to be seen and not heard. And that's not my goal. My goal is to say, you are to be a voice in this generation. So I have to help you harness that voice for the, the sake of good. And my little daughter Hartley, just thinking of her, you know, there's times that she just loves to uh, kind of be independent and go and do her own thing for hours at a time. And so just to have those moments of saying, okay, that's part of who she is, but how can we inject more community or how can we inject more of ourselves or how, you know, how can we participate or if she's doing something, making sure it's something that aligns with who we know she is inside versus just entertainment or screen time or something. And it's really profound when you hear God over, for the sake of your children. I just think, you know, that, that, that statement I've said many times that some of you have heard me say, God loves who we love more than we love them. And so to practice that as a parent, you love them more than I love them, which means you know things about them, you created them, you've thought of things about them, you know how to parent them. There's a wisdom that you have that I don't quite have yet, so can I tap into you? And what's beautiful is you might ask those big questions and it may not be like a direct download from God, but you might read a parenting article or one of your friends when you're in school line trying to pick up your kids might share something with you that's wisdom that you were praying about and looking for answers to, or maybe it's something comes across the television or whatever, and it just goes right into your spirit. And that's what I love about God is that he uses the resources of everything we're interacting with to speak to us. He doesn't just speak directly internally because he wants to show us he's in our fullness of our whole life. And some people get frustrated with that because they ask God direct answers and they're like, 
don't you ever answer me? And the reality is that he's saying, no, no, no. I am in everything around you. My glory covers the earth. Look for me everywhere I can be found, which is everywhere except for where there's sin or immorality. He can be found everywhere else. And I love that because as a parent, you need to you know, pull on that and say, okay, God, there's psychology that you want to give me over parenting that I don't have. And only you can give it to me, but you're going to use this resource or that resource. And I, I love that so much. And I think of some of the things that Sri and I have learned through Love and Logic, which is psychology, or through uh, Danny Silk's Parenting on Purpose, these kinds of books. It's so cool when you see things that God's already put inside of you, but you know how to form them because someone gives you language for it. That's what the prophetic's like when you're being a parent. And I think you know, when you hit, hit those failure moments where you've just, you've run over your kid's feelings or you've you've um, been too stern with some of the discipline or you've said something that you just regret saying or you've uh, not honored something that was in their heart to do and you can feel it later. You feel like, ah, you know, if you're trying to be sensitive or have empathy or connection to your child, how you can feel those things. If you don't yet, ask God to make you aware again, give you spiritual awareness for you as a parent. But, you know, when you hit those things and the Holy Spirit comes and convicts you, the beautiful thing is he gives you a pathway back to rebuild connection. And that's so profound. I love that being a parent with Jesus and especially hearing his voice helps me so much. I would feel so alone without him because he's given me so much. And I feel like our daughters have an incredible quality of life because I'm sensitive because of his wiring in me, not because of, I mean, me without him would not be a good parent. But me with him, I feel like I'm uh, not overly sensitive, but sensitive in ways that me as a you know, man who's raised by Colonel Larry Bowles, my dad, who's a colonel in the Air Force, who is a wonderful man and has emotions and told me he loved me, but at the same time is still working through how to be emotional. Me being, you know, the second generation of that and trying to work through emotions and being sensitive to girls and the whole thing. I always thought I would have boys. I had girls. And so like learning how to play with girls is way different than playing with boys most of the time. And so it's just been such a learning experience. And I'm so glad I'm learning it with God. So I just want to just share this with you because philosophically, a lot of us don't know as Christians that our relationship with God actually impacts the way we parent in this way. And then as you hear God, man, it just changes all your options as a parent. So I want you guys to share like win stories in the comments below as far as some time that God spoke to you. Because it'll help the other parents who are watching this. Some time that God spoke to you, something that helped you to parent. And I just, I love these stories. I know it'll encourage me. So let's share some win stories. If you like these videos, your prophetic journey videos are teaching us about things and sharing experiences in life. Please subscribe, hit the notifications bell and share this with someone else who needs to hear it as a parent, especially fathers who need to hear that God, when he's with you, he gives you so much more than when you don't have God. It helps you so much. And some of you, maybe that's the deciding factor, even in salvation. Like, do I want to become a Christian? Because you hear this as a father, you're like, I need a leg up. I need, I need God to do that, to give me his perspective. If he made them, I need that. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hey, your prophetic journey friends and family. We have a new book coming out with my co-host of Exploring the Marketplace, Bob Hassan, right over here. Bob, we have this book, Wired to Hear. Tell us about it. Wired to Hear. Here's the cover. It's yes. uh, connecting God's voice to your life, influence, and career. This isn't a normal book like what we've done before. This is a new book for marketplace, for people who have jobs. This is a great book about integrating God's voice into business. Yeah, I don't think there's a book like this out there. You're going to want to get this book. And there's a pre-order special now. If you get this book, you're going to get a video series, a signed copy, and you're going to get it earlier than everybody else who get it on May 4th and after. So come join us. Come join this conversation of Exploring the Marketplace and get Wired to Hear, which is going to help you understand how to integrate God's voice into your workplace, into the marketplace.